So this Ripple versus the SEC case has had several extensions and today is no different. Today I have an announcement about another extension that was just made and why both parties actually agreed on it. I'm gonna tell you what they're actually doing and what it's gonna to do to the timeline of this case. And speaking of the effect that this case might have, I'm gonna tell you what Raul Paul, a former Goldman exec, has to say about XRP and what his speculation about the price that's actually gonna happen once this case is resolved. In Friday, the CPI news, the Consumer Price Index news that came out in the United States about its inflation data was as expected. It's really bad. But there's some other news I wanna talk about regarding the actual inflation rate and, and what that could do to Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market. And speaking of Bitcoin right now, there was an odd chart that I just saw on Twitter that's now kind of going viral. It's a chart theory that was actually developed a long time ago, but it's something that Bitcoin is actually playing out in real time right now. And it looks kind of scary accurate. I'm gonna tell you about it in this video. Also, I have a little bit of Twitter information. Also, I'm gonna go over a little bit of some Twitter information, especially if you are a long-term XRP holder, gonna to wanna to pay attention to this. Hey everyone, my name is Randy, and welcome back to The Late Night Grind. Right now, I'm covering the Ripple versus the SEC case, as well as other cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any or all those topics interest you, make sure you hit the subscribe button, subscribe to Late Night Grind, hit the bell notification icon so YouTube will notify you when I release a new video. And of course, if you're feeling generous today, I really appreciate it if you guys do two things. Number one, smash the thumbs up button. And number two, watch this video all the way to the end. Those are the two best things that you can do to support a YouTube channel. So if you do that, I greatly appreciate it. All right, let's jump into it. So I'm actually gonna start off with that Twitter news I just mentioned, because earlier today I saw a tweet from Eleanor Tourette, who is with Fox Business. She's actually been reporting with Charlie Gasparino on uh, some of what they've been digging into regarding the SEC and uh, the whole is Ethereum a security or not a security and all the stuff that they've essentially been digging into and investigating, which the XRP community really, really appreciates. Well, Eleanor Tourette recently tweeted out something that's uh, kind of somewhat conspiratorial for XRP holders. She actually mentioned something that Val Hill Capital, Jimmy Valley, has said that he has proposed to the United States government that the Fed buy back XRP for, get this, $37,500 per XRP token. Now, of course, this is a proposal and it's not going to go anywhere. It's not realistic. It's not going to happen. And if it does, I will happily eat my words, but trust me, it's not gonna happen. But nonetheless, she tweeted it out and I kinda got a little bit concerned because I don't want her or Charlie Gasparino to lose some of the credibility they have being with Fox Business while they actually do some investigating, uh, some investigatory research regarding the backstory of the SEC and Ethereum. So I just wanted to put that out there in case you saw it, in case you follow me on Twitter, you just, be careful when somebody tweets out something like that. All right, now I'm gonna get into the inflation news in the US and really around the world, and it's not good news. So the November CPI index came out and inflation has risen at 6.8%, which is the highest it's risen in 39 years. That is also not good. And we're also seeing the United States Treasury backtrack on the whole transitory talk, uh, basically saying, yeah, this uh, whole inflation thing's uh, it's gonna be a while. But what I saw some economists talking about was that if they calculated uh, inflation numbers correctly, it would probably be more like 14 to 15% is a more accurate number. But nonetheless, the number that they use now, 6.8%, it's still a 39 year high. And the bad news is from what I've seen people talking about, next year is going to be even worse. So what's that gonna do for the crypto world? Well, that's been a Bitcoin talking point for quite some time, Bitcoin being a hedge against inflation. You've seen that all over the place if you're on Twitter, if you're on YouTube, even Facebook. So is that gonna actually help Bitcoin in the long run? Well, if you have institutional investors and big whale buyers buying into that, then yeah, it's of course gonna help. But there's also gonna be those that are scared and will always run back to their almighty dollar. And that's, it. And that's the division that I'm starting to see on Twitter of people seeing that crypto is, is essentially the future of the monetary system versus the dollar, which is, well, inflationary. It's controlled by central banks and has a whole lot of drawbacks. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Okay, so I wanna move on to this Bitcoin chart that just came out earlier this morning. And it's actually a chart, it's not specific to Bitcoin, but it's called the Three Peaks and Domed House Theory. And what it is, basically a chart where uh, after decades and decades of studying stocks, of studying stocks and markets and indexes, some very smart people come up with theories in terms of how uh, stocks and indexes and prices will actually move and create certain formations on certain charts. Well, we didn't know what a Wyckoff accumulation chart was until Bitcoin played it out to a T back in June and July. Well, right now, this Three Peaks and a Domed House 
is shaping up perfectly. So if you want to take a look at that further, I'll link my Twitter account in the description below. I have it posted there. But of course, that's always just a theory. There's a lot of uh, macro issues at play as well. But nonetheless, if it does play out, the chart that I looked at had Bitcoin topping out at about 140,000 at the end of that market cycle. All right, so let's move on to some XRP news. Raul Paul, who I've uh, talked about several times on this channel, he's a former Goldman Sachs executive. He is a very big investor into the crypto world. Uh, he believes that this market cycle is not done, that Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and a bunch of others are still waiting to go to the moon. Well, specifically, he just mentioned XRP. He said XRP is probably the best risk to reward ratio that there is in all of crypto right now, largely due to the case against the SEC. Now we've talked about how there's a major price suppression uh, of the XRP price going on, but because of this case, well, Raul Paul, he thinks as soon as this case is ended, as soon as it's settled and XRP gets clarity, he's saying there's a minimum of a 10 X. It's going to go to at least $10 literally as soon as that case ends. And he might not be wrong. There's others saying 25 to $30 as soon as this case ends, because there's essentially a backlog of price suppression going back to last December. So that's gonna be really interesting to see. So moving on to some information about this case. Well, James Filan just posted last night that both sides, so both the SEC and Ripple, have combined and filed a joint extension request to Judge Netburn for a couple of extra days for expert witness depositions. And from some of the uh, legal analysis that I've seen, they said it's not gonna affect the overall length of the case. It's not gonna affect that timeline at all. It'll just extend this portion of the case by, by a few more days. And some of the responses that I've seen from Twitter were really, really interesting. In fact, from one who is a litigator who said, where anytime he's been involved with depositions of that many people, in this case, Ripple and SEC have named 16 people that they want a deposition. He said it's largely because they're trying to get a feel of whether they should actually go to trial or whether they should or whether they should settle. He said if it was a poor witness, they want to go to trial because they think they might have a better chance of winning. If it's a good witness, they got to think about settling. And if it's a great witness, they got to think about settling fast. So that's the extension and we've seen several extensions already in this case, but it is good news that at least as of right now, it doesn't look like that's going to extend the, the entirety of this case, just simply this portion of the case. So if you want to follow along with that and any of the other stories that I talked about, make sure you subscribe to the Late Night Grind. And if you are new to the channel, go ahead and click on the community tab up here. I put out polls on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. Uh, love to get to know your guys' thoughts on what's happening with not just the Ripple and SEC case, but in the crypto space, investment market space, and more. So if you could check that out, I'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, thank you for giving it a big thumbs up and for watching this far all the way to the end. And as always, see you guys on the next video.